Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. How are you all? I hope you are doing good. Let's begin today's lesson. I would like to ask you a question. Why do you think people migrate from one place to other? Think about as many possible reasons as you can. There can be a reason that maybe they want to migrate for a better life. Maybe they are migrating for a safer society, for a safer living, for security. Think about the possible reasons and then you will know why I am asking you these questions. Because today we are going to learn about the migration to Abyssinia. If you understand the answer of this question, then I'm sure it is easier for you to understand why did Muslims migrate it to Abyssinia. When Muslims grew in number in Mecca, Islam became well known and pe people began to talk about Islam in their assemblies. And this annoyed the Quraysh disbelievers and began to hurt Muslims in Mecca to keep them away from Islam if they could. If it was in the fifth year of prophethood that they started... Uh, they, they had made the lives of Muslims difficult already, but it was in the fifth year that Muslims finally decided to take some action. The Prophet Muhammad peace upon him wanted to save the lives and faith of his companions from harm and oppression. He also wanted to make the number of Muslims few in the eyes of the disbelievers. So he advised some of his companions to migrate from Mecca and said to them, scatter in land. Because uh, the torture and uh, uh, oppression from the disbelievers was increasing day by day. It was making the lives of Muslims difficult. Every day Muslims were not able to perform their religious um, duties or they were unable to learn the Islam in the early days or to read Quran, whatever part was revealed till that time. So Prophet Muhammad peace upon him thought that its Muslims are already very less and he should reduce their number by keeping them uh, away from the eyes of the disbelievers so they cannot harm them. Because if they harm the Muslim at first place then it will be difficult to spread the Islam. So for this reason to keep the Muslim life safe and to save the message of Islam Prophet Muhammad peace upon him advised his companions to migrate from Mecca and scatter the other parts of land and he told them to look for other parts which one is safer so Muslims migrated to Abyssinia they said where shall we go O messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said he directed them to go to the land of Habsha Abyssinia which is now Ethiopia you can see in the map it's Madina it's Mecca and they can go by crossing Red Sea to Ethiopia it is a land of honesty and its king Al Najashi Negus is faithful and no one is wronged in his kingdom he was already famous for his um, justice and kind nature and he was a faithful um, a king although he was a christian king but he had uh, he was a good person so the first migration happened in the fifth year after the mission or the fifth year of prophethood the number of muslims who migrated were 11 men and four women um, and they stayed in there for three months, but they were eager for their homeland. So they went back when they heard that the leaders of Quraysh increased their oppression against the Muslim and those who returned from Abyssinia. And then they decided to go back because they were uh, longing for their home because everyone loved their homeland. So this is very difficult to stay away from your home. And when they come to know that they are torturing the Muslims who are still there in Mecca, so they could not uh, stay there in um, Abyssinia more anymore. So they decided to go back. But when they went, went back, Prophet Muhammad peace upon him uh, advised them that the situation is getting worse. They are increasing their oppression. You should try to go. If you find Abyssinia a better place, why not you go and stay there? So Prophet Muhammad peace upon him and advised them. They decided to migrate again to Abyssinia where the number of migrants in the second time amounted to 83 men and 18 women. Uh, when people, the Quraysh came to know about the migration, they sent their messengers uh, to uh, speak to King Nagas Najashi. Uh, the Quraysh representatives were Amr bin As and Abdullah bin Rabia. They sent them with precious gifts to bribe the king so he could return the Muslims back with them. But the king returned their gifts and insisted on the protection of the Muslims. Um, 
so what happened actually in the court of uh, Najashi uh, when Amr bin al-As went and presented the gifts he said the king O king there is a group of evil persons from among our youth who have escaped to your kingdom they practice a religion which is either we nor you know they have forsaken our religion and have not embraced your religion the respected leaders of their people from among the respected leaders of their people from among their own parents and uncles and from their own clans have sent us to you to request you to return them the king looked towards his bishops who had already been bribed they said oh king they speak the truth their own people know uh, them better and are better acquainted with what they have done send them back to that they themselves might judge them the king was very angry with their response and said no by god i won't surrender them to anyone until i myself call them and question them about what they have been accused of then najashi he invited the muslim at the court and asked their leader jafar what is this religion which you have introduced for yourself and which has served to cut you off from the religion of your people you also did not enter my religion nor the religion of any other community jafar stood up jafar was the uh, muslim representative in that time uh, stood and re replied with full confidence o king we were a people in a state of ignorance and immorality worshiping idols and eating the flesh of dead animals committing all sorts of ab abomination and shameful deeds breaking the ties of kinship treating guests badly and a strong among us exploited the weak we remained in this state until allah sent us a prophet peace be upon him one of our own people whose lineage truthfulness trustworthiness and integrity were well known to us he called us to worship allah alone and to renounce the stones and the idols which we are and our ancestors used to worship besides allah he commanded us to speak the truth to honor our promises and to be kind to relations and to be helpful to our neighbors to seize all the forbidden acts okay so there this is how jafar azillah ta'ala who made the speech when he finishes his speech thereupon a king uh, um, thereupon the king najashi was impressed and he was eager to hear more so he asked Jafar Allah, do you have with you something of what your prophet brought from God please read to me Jafar in his rich melodious voice recited from his portion from a portion of Surah Maryam from verses 19 to 32 so Najashi stu stood up for Allah's words and said certainly this and what Jesus has brought come out of one source he turned He turned to the Makkan delegates and said angrily, I won't hand them to you and I defend them. Then he ordered his courtiers to dismiss the delegation and to return their gifts to them. He then returned to Jafar and his group and said, You are welcome. Your prophet is welcome. I admit that he is the apostle about whom Jesus had given good news. Live where you like in my country. The pagan delegation returned to Mecca with their gifts in despair. This was the um, strong conversation, uh, fruitful, uh, meaningful and very productive conversation between Najashi and the Muslims. And then Najashi welcomed the Muslims and they stayed there for 11 years. And they practiced Islam, they introduced Islam to the people over there and they observed the etiquette of staying in foreign lands and were loyal to the Abyssinian king and people they tried to be very good to them and after that they returned to Medina when Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him migrated to Medina when finally Prophet also left Mecca so he they also migrated with him Umm Salama may Allah be pleased with her said about the migration when we arrived in the land of Abyssinia we heard there the best neighbor and the protector Allah Jashi we were safe for our religion and worship Allah glory be to him we were never hurt nor did we hear what we what we disliked means she is telling that Muslims were very safe over there 
Jafar bin Abi Talib was able to he convince Al Najashi through his wisdom, his reason, and evidence, and he said to him. O king, we were a people in a state of ignorance, worship idols, and eating flesh of dead, committing shameful deeds, breaking the ties of kinship, treating guests badly, and the strong among us exploited the weak. We remain in this state until Allah sent us a prophet, one of our own people, whose lineage, truthfulness, trustworthiness, and integrity were integrity were well known to us. He called us to worship Allah alone, so we we believed in Him and what He brought to us from Allah, and we follow Him in what He has asked us to do, and we keep away from what He forbade us. Then He recited the portion of Surah Maryam, verses nineteen to thirty-two. Surely the true religion with Allah is Islam, and those who were given the book differed only after knowledge had come to them, out of envy among themselves and whoever disbelieves in the message of Allah Allah indeed is quick at reckoning this is the verse from surah ali imran this is true whoever will follow Allah will find the truth whoever will go against Allah will definitely be misguided that's all from today i hope you have learned great things from this lesson thank you very much take care